So let me take this around here and actually show off what it does. So, oops, that's not the button for it. Uh, this, yeah, there we go. So basically it puts down um, a pool of, let's, let's say that's lemon juice. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Azuna Plays. Today we are planning Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Now if you're not familiar with this, it just came out today. It's the remake of a game I really really enjoyed by the name of Binding of the uh, by the name of Binding of Isaac. And it changed a lot of things in the game, added a lot of new content, updated the graphics, and a whole bunch of other different things that are coming out with it. And I've been super excited to play this game. And I had fully intended to record my very first run with you guys. But unfortunately, there were some issues recording it on my computer. So I wasn't able to do that. And I've been waiting for the PS4 copy to come out. And this is what you're seeing right now is the PlayStation 4 version. Uh, they look... They seem to look and play identically. I doubt there's very much different. For whatever reason, the PlayStation 4 file size was bigger than the computers. Not entirely sure what's up with that. I don't know really if there's a reason for that or anything, but oh well, it doesn't really matter a whole lot. So here we are, and what I've done, full disclosure, is I've taken the seed because you can basically pick the randomly generated seed from each run. I'm just going to use the bomb, blow up this key, get this key here, kind of important. I'll explain a little bit of the game's details as we go on here. I just want to kind of go over this. Uh, what was I saying? You know what, actually, I completely went off tangent, which apparently is a problem of mine. Having watched uh, my previous Call of Duty episode, I just seem to just go all over the place with everything I talk about. But uh, basically, I... Oh, yes, yes, I was talking about the seed. So basically I copied the same seed from my first run because I really wanted to share that with you guys and go through. Obviously, I will I know a limited amount of what I'm going to see, I suppose. I'm not entirely sure if everything is the same, but if you guys want to play along with this seed too, if you have Binding of Isaac Rebirth, I'll pop up the seed here in a second and show you what you need to enter. And then you basically just enter that seed on when you're starting the run and you can play the exact same run or something relatively similar to mine. So let me see if I can find the options. Whoops, I just hit the share button. Okay, that's not what I intended to do here. Let me go back here. Oh, yeah, yeah, here we go. So it's PMX8B7K7. And that'll play this run here. So you'll get similar stuff similar to what I've got. This here is chocolate milk. So I'm going to pick that up. It's going to enhance my shots. In this case, I get charged shots. And if I want to fire fast, I have to actually tap my stick here to shoot. So, what is Binding of Isaac Rebirth? Basically, it's a dungeon crawler with a really strange premise. It's very... Uh, it's really, really hard to explain, but there's some really messed up stuff that goes on in this game, and it's actually really fun. You basically go around fighting through dungeons, collecting items, getting better, to eventually defeat your mom. Yeah, really, really odd concept there, and a little dark in a way. But uh, it's a heck of a lot of fun. And the first one on the PC basically came out. Creator wasn't really expecting to do really well. He did, or it did really well. And went on to make an expansion as well as an extra free content thing they released prior to the expansion. And then led to the moment of this, the Rebirth, which added a bunch of new enemies, new items, new pickups, new bosses, all kinds of different things. Ah, crap, that's, that's terrible damage on my part. Um, and just a ton of new things that they added to basically give you a whole new experience with this game. And let me tell you, it is phenomenal. And, I, and if I didn't mention, it also changed the graphic style. This was more hand-drawn, a lot very cartoony in the original. And this one here is, I'm just going to look at my map here and see if I missed anything I want to go to. Not really, I didn't go to that one room in the top there, which is a shop, but I'm going to ignore that. But uh, it was more hand-drawn. Uh, very smooth and stuff. When they remade this game, they definitely went for more of a pixel art style. And that's what you got here. And as you see, he has really messed up dreams about what happened in his real life. This kid is not having a really easy life um, outside of all of this. And it definitely got a lot, of worse, uh, a lot worse in this case. And I did forget I have this pill I want to take. I have in the bottom corner. I'll just gotta remember the button here. Uh, right bumper. There we go. Hema... Oh, I'm not even going to try and say that. It's too hard. Ooh, look at these guys. Flies and little poops. Awesome. Um, I'm not entirely sure how that item works properly. I've seen it being used by a bunch of other people, and I would have thought it would have given me enough hearts to replenish, but I, I don't know. I'll eventually figure that out as we go through here. 
Um, the kind of the format I'm looking for with Binding of Isaac here, uh, which I talked about, like Call of Duty, what I was going to go for with that style, kind of like two games per video. Binding of Isaac is probably going to be a single run through for each video, regardless of its length. I'm going to try and keep it. Oh, I'm going to blow this. Oops, this is the bomb button. That's uh, actually a tinted rock, which gave me a bomb and a spirit heart. Awesome, awesome. Uh, there's several different types of hearts in the game. I'll cover a little bit later, but yeah, basically, dip, um, as long as the videos don't end up being too long, I'll probably do a whole run uh, for each video I end up doing. I don't know why that came up. I think I accidentally touched my trackpad, and I'm taking some pretty hard or pretty, some pretty bad damage here. I'm still not very good at this game. Like it's been a long time since I seriously played Binding of Isaac on the PC, and even then, I wasn't uh, one of those people who got. I actually even fully finished the game. Uh, you could accomplish something called Platinum God, which was basically getting every single thing and seeing everything in the game. I never did accomplish that. Uh, not because I didn't enjoy the game. There's a lot of different... Uh, how should I say this? Basically, the Flash version didn't really run very well, which is what it was made in, and I was kind of waiting when I found out about the Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Ooh, nice glitches there. For this version, before I ended up getting a bunch of that stuff just because it was a little awkward to play after a while. This is running at 60 frames per second, at least on the computer that's what it runs at. Um, not, I'm assuming the PlayStation 4 would run at 60 frames, I'm not entirely sure why it wouldn't. Um, but it's definitely a lot more smoother experience. Basically you'd experience some nasty frame drops like drop down to 20 frames per second. Uh, lemon min Mishap. This is a terrible item. Basically, it just pops up a liquid pool underneath you that damages enemies. I guess there's worse things in the game, but not a whole lot. What's in here? Oh, crap. I need to spend two tiers to get in here. I I don't know what this room does, to be honest with you. Oh, what's, what's this? Okay, that's strange. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. I don't think anything happened. Nothing that I noticed different. Hmm. Oh well, moving on. Whoa, oh, hold on. It re-rolled those coins into something. That's strange. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Very, very interesting. So I'm going to make my way down here. I do have a key. I could... Oh. No, I could use the key to unlock that door, which I think is our shop, but I'm not going to because shop items unless they're on sale usually cost about 15 cents if they're on sale they cost seven cents for a decent item obviously you can get other things in there like hearts and keys and bombs and stuff but uh you really want to go in there for the items for the most part unless you're lacking on something and i can't afford to get an item so i might as well save the key for the next floor because i'm going to need it to unlock my item room this guy here is Monstro. He's from the first game, actually. I don't think they changed a whole lot to him, just kind of uh, what he looks like and stuff. He does pretty much the same things as he used to, though. So that's a black heart. Ooh, a deal with the devil. So when you don't take red heart damage on a floor, you increase your odds of getting a deal with the devil after you beat it. And you get various different things in here. Now, what these item, these particular items, they cost you your red hearts. As you can see, this particular item will cost me two of my red hearts, but I'll get some bonus effects. This is Spirit of the Night, which lets you fly, which is a phenomenal pickup, so I'm going to take it. This leaves me with one red heart and two dark hearts, which I'll talk about here for a second. Oh, a snack. Nice. So that gave me an extra red heart, which is really good. Now, because I'm gonna, f I can fly, I'm going to go back here and pick up those things in the in this room over here. But anyway, so between there is those red hearts, which are your standard hearts. I'll pick up that key. Awesome. Tarot card, the stars. I'm not entirely sure what the stars does. Imagine we'll figure, figure it out after. And uh, anyways, back to it. Um, actually, hold on. Ooh, more dark hearts. So I'm going to pick these guys up. So back onto what hearts do. Sorry, getting completely off track here. I'll explain this while I walk down here. Basically, red hearts are your standard hearts. You can replenish them by getting pickups. There are little blue hearts called soul hearts. Those are basically red hearts that when you pick them up, you lose them, they're gone. Dark hearts are exactly like soul hearts. You pick them up when you lose them, they're gone. But when you deplete them, they actually do a special effect that just damages. I was about to say destroys the monsters in a room. But uh, it won't fully destroy some stronger stuff. So it basically just damages them. So the dark hearts are really nice to get. Hey now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Um, there's a lot of different themes in this game. As you can see, here's gluttony. There's a bunch of other sins in this game as well, too. You can fight pride and sloth and greed and... Oh, that was terrible on my part. And see the dark heart exploded? Boom, killed him. Did enough damage to destroy him, which was really nice. But uh, terrible on my part that I took two hits of damage from him, losing that heart. Because I could definitely use it and save it for better things. For sure, for sure. Ooh, okay. So in this room, we have a blood... Uh, blood donation machine I guess is what it's called basically you can sacrifice some of your red hearts which I'm going to do and they'll give you coins as well as a chance at blowing up into an item since I have so many red hearts on the ground in previous areas I'm just gonna gamble a little bit here and get some money because it'd be really nice to go to our shop on this floor and that chest there obviously I could Ooh, I shouldn't have done that hold on let me go back I should have just picked up one of those and got the full heart from the other room, but not a problem. I'm going to hold this charge in my face. But anyways, uh, that chest I can open with a key if I so desire. And I might. We'll see what ends up happening here. I think I might actually go fight the boss first here. And then, um, ooh, Gertie. Ugh. She's one of the original bosses. I don't think they changed any of her patterns. She basically spawns a bunch of stuff, shoots at you... And that's about it. So you just kind of cycle around here and shoot her. She was one of the bosses that I was the worst at when the game first came out. Now sh I don't have as many problems. It's, I guess, just getting used to the pattern and so on. I still will take damage on her and can suck it up and like, like that. See? That was just terrible on my part. And I think I'm trying to kill that thing too much. It has too much life for me to really focus on this with this charge shot. Because it takes a lot of effort to actually pump him down. And... Oh, well, oh, even that didn't kill it. But there, now it's gone. I'll pick these up and I'm going to try and pick them up anyways. Go away, flies. Go away. There we go. And I touch. Oops, I almost took damage there. That was terrible. That was terrible. So we come around here, die. And instead of firing at me, she's going into these weird phases. And actually, no, let me use a bomb. I'm gonna place a bomb there. I'm gonna place a oh, I shouldn't have tried to place a bomb there. It cost me. It cost me half a heart. She's almost dead, though, so that's good. And for as much as I was saying that she doesn't bother me as much, I guess what I should have said is she doesn't kill me as much. Although I did lose a heart and a half, I do believe, in this room so far, which is a little unfortunate. Now, since I haven't taken red heart damage on this floor yet, I could theoretically have gotten a deal with the devil. But when you've taken a deal with the devil on the previous floor, it drastically reduces your chance. I'm going to pick this up. Magic scab. HP plus luck up. Ooh, lovely. Actually, the HP up is really good. I can use it definitely. Ooh, nice, a nickel. So that's five cents there. And boom. Okay, so I'll leave those hearts for when I come back. Actually, it's probably bad for me to do that, and I should just take them right now, but I should be able to clear out the rest of the floor without them or having to really worry about them. And we'll go south first here. And just gun down these little worms. All, all these enemies have names, specific names, and I'm not 110% sure on what they are, so I'm not even going to go there. Basically, spiders, worms, blah, blah, blah. We'll just work with that for now. Now, I could go into basically what that room is, and I don't think I explained it on the previous floor. That's a curse room. You take damage going in and out of it. Ooh, stigmata, damage and HP up. That's really nice. I'm actually getting a lot of damage bonuses on here. But anyways, these curse rooms, you take damage going in and out, but they have a chance at getting you deal with the devil room items if you go into them. So it's really something you want to consider going into if you have the opportunity. But um, when you're flying, though, like I am, you can actually just uh, walk in. Ooh, that's an eternal heart. Now, what that does is if I keep that whole eternal heart for the rest of the floor, I can redeem it going through the trap door into a full red heart which is really nice and I'll, I'll save that because it's the first thing you lose when you take damage if I recall correctly oh okay but here's another eternal heart so I'll pick up both of them now what will happen though because I have two of them is they'll just combine into one immediately boom like that that was that would be exactly what would happen if I went down to the previous floor or the next floor except I don't have to worry about losing it so this is the shop. You can buy different things here, and you can blow up the shopkeeper if you want to. Sometimes he gives you decent things. In this case, he just drops spiders, probably to signify that I'm a dick for blowing him up. Oh well, no big loss. This here is the Bible, which if I take this, you can use it 
um, and it would gain flight for you, which I don't really need. Or you can also use it on the end boss, your mother, to insta-kill her. Kind of goes with the theme of the story about what's going on in here, which I'll talk a, bit, a little bit more about later on, perhaps. Maybe not. Let me see how many red hearts I have here. And in this case, obviously, I'm not taking it. I basically just went away from it. I don't really feel it's necessary. Thank thanks to this blood machine, I have a ton of coins. A way more than I had had before. So that's really, really nice. So we'll continue on here. This will move to the caves too, if I recall correctly. And man, these kids are really mean to do this to Isaac. Who, who does that? Who does that? I don't... I mean, back when I was in school, no one farted on each other. Hmm. This here is an arcade. So basically, you spend a coin to come in, and then you can gamble here at the slot machine. Gives you different payouts, like in this case, more money. Or coins and bombs. This guy here, basically, you have a 1 in 3 chance to get whatever he does. Um, in the previous game... Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so that's a troll bomb there. Basically, the troll bomb seeks you out and kills you. In this case, it blew up my slot machine, which was not very nice of it. So I'll just play this once... Uh, I've got a lot of mini money though, so I might sink a couple more in here and see what I get. Uh, as I was saying though, on the PC in the original version, it didn't matter what skull you selected, he would uh, basically still have a 1 in 3 chance of paying out. So I'm not sure if they changed that in Rebirth or not. And this guy here is Larry, Larry Jr. He's actually normally a boss, but here we found him kind of in his monster form. After you've gone to kind of the next stage of floors, past an area, you can get the boss monsters from the previous set of floors as standard enemies. Oh, a new pill. Let's try it out. Pretty fly. Ooh, nice. So this bit gives me a little fly that'll hover around me. And while we're here, you know what? I'm going to use the stars card and see what that does. Oh, this teleported me to the item room. Anarchist cookbook. Awesome. So I didn't really use Lemon Mishap much, so let me take this around here and actually show off what it does. So, oops, that's not the button for it. Uh, this, yeah, there we go. So basically it puts down um, a pool of, let's let's say that's lemon juice. It, it's not, but we'll, we'll say it is. So anyways, I should have been using that a little bit more often because it did charge every two rooms and I did have it, but because it's not the greatest thing, I didn't really think about using it at all, so... Alright, so this guy's a little flaming jumper, gonna take out of him. Usually there's a form of enemy that's a regular flaming jumper, and... Oh, why am I going around that? I can just fly over this stuff, jeez. Um, if the regular flaming gen uh, jumpers touch the fire, they usually um, turn into those flaming ones, and they're a lot more annoying to deal with. Now, the Anarchist Cookbook is really fun because if I don't accidentally lay bombs, I'll show it off. Here we go, this trigger, boom. It spawns a bunch of random different bombs that'll blow up and damage a bunch of things in the room. Uh, in the case of this enemy though, you can't hurt them at all until they pop their head up. So they're just gonna sit there, boom, you wait and pop the head off. Oh nice, so that's a golden key. It basically lets you unlock everything in an air, or on this floor for free. So anything I was previously gonna go into or not going to go into because of keys, I can just go into because I have the keys for it. I'm just going to look at my map here really quickly. Nice. So there exists in this game things called secret rooms. They spawn uh, based on a certain set of rules. And it, Oh crap. Wow. Okay. I've never seen that enemy before. He's like a giant walking spider. This guy's new. He seems to spit tears, which is what these are actually are tears. Which why you'll augment them through a variety of different ways. Ah, okay, here we go. So this is a secret room. Basically, they usually spawn between um, three different rooms. In this case, there's four, and that's just how it is. I'm going to blow up these TNTs. I was really hoping that they would have killed this guy here, but that's okay. Um, the secret rooms can house any number of things. They usually have coins. Sometimes they have chests. They can have slot machines and various other different things. Sometimes they even have items. Uh, in that case, I wasn't that really, or I wasn't that lucky with them. Oh, in my little bit of time playing this game, these I hate these spiders so much. They're such an annoying monster. I'm really, really lucky that I can fly right now, actually. So, okay, clearly I'm done in this area of the room. Let's, uh, you know, oh, I was gonna say let's go in there, but I can't. That is a boss challenge room, which can give you some pretty sweet stuff, but you have to be on one red heart left. You could basically have one red heart and like nine spirit hearts and still go in there. But in the case I have five red hearts so it's not going to let me go in there at all. 
Oh, come on. Pop your head up, buddy. Come on. And sorry for the information overload. There's a whole bunch of things, obviously, to explain to you guys, because I don't know whether you've played the games before or not. Maybe you've come to this channel just looking for, you know, a new take on, or a cool set of things you can do in Isaac. Really hard to say. Oh, yeah, and I forgot I had the golden key there. I was like, hmm, interesting. So I'm going to use... Oh, <laughs> I was going to use my anarchist cookbook, but I got used to the buttons here on the uh, controller. It's going to take a bit of used to, getting used to. So this here is Greed. He's one of the sin bosses that you can fight. He will pop up in the stores, usually after a certain point, and usually after you've been to a store on the previous floor. This item here is the Steam Sale, which uh, makes uh, items in the shop 50% off. So it can be pretty handy if you can get your hands on it early. Unfortunately, we, after this, we only have two more floors to go through, so that's only two more shops, which I guess isn't that bad at all, but uh, it, it might actually pay itself out, but I have so much coins right now, it, it doesn't really matter what I get in there. So these guys, obviously, little poops, move around kill you, and another troll bomb, yay. Who's this boss? Ah, oh, Chubb. Chubb's an original boss as well, too. It seems like I'm on a streak here getting original bosses. He basically goes around, lays down these little worms, I think they're called silkworms, and charges you, obviously. You can lay a bomb down, he'll eat it, and he'll stop him and do good damage to him, but actually, you know what, I was going to say I wasn't going to do that, but I might, just because. Ah, uh, if I stop being an idiot there. Charge me, yes. Yeah, so that was a decent amount of damage done to him. I've only got one bomb left, so I will save that for the next floor to get into the next floor secret room, because... It's generally good practice to try and get into every possible room that you can get into. It really improves your odds of beating the game. And right now, being the first time through the game, it's actually pretty easy to beat it. Uh, relatively, because as you beat the game more and more and more, there's more and more floors that are added, harder monsters that are added, so you might as well enjoy it while it's easy and get into the habits, or get in, make good habits that will help you win later on when it actually gets really difficult and interesting. I've never seen this item before. Placenta. <laughs> regeneration plus health up. I actually don't know what regeneration is, so I guess we're going to find out. Alright, down to the next floor. Looks like I've done everything that I want to on this floor. And this will be the depths. It's the first... Well, I guess it's not really the first floor. It's the first floor before the mom fight. Basically, it's a two-parter. Spoiler alert, next floor we're going to fight mom. But uh, you could have guessed that already based on the premise of the game that I mentioned earlier. And let's see here. So this is this is Dingle. He basically is the... This is the... Uh, sorry. This is the uh, regular monster version of the boss. Except, if I recall correctly, the boss version, he doesn't split into little ones. Or smaller versions of himself. Only the actual monster himself does it. I don't recall fighting Dingle on this fight. I don't think that was one of the bosses. Maybe it was, and I'm just being an idiot. I can't recall, actually. I don't... I'm trying to think if... Yeah, no, I don't think I did fight him. But yeah, because we're so further along, they basically just turn him into monster to make your rooms more challenging, is all. Hmm, ghosts. This is a new enemy that's added into the game. It looks like these guys just kind of seek you out and try to run into you. And it's... If you notice I'm like getting sucked towards the middle of the room, that's because that little guy with his mouth open, he's actually is pulling us towards her. Like, if I stand still, I will start hovering over there. Yeah, and he keeps going even after that's done. They have a couple of rooms that they've added into the game where they set up a couple of those and make you walk between spikes. Really exciting, of course. Now, you might be wondering, okay, so I got placenta, and I said I've never seen it before, but I'm using the seed from my PC run. It looks like the seeds between the PC and the console are different because I am not getting the same items that I got on my PC run. I actually, my first PC run was really overpowered. Like I got ridiculously strong and won the game with ease. Now I'm not saying that we won't win the game. Um, odds are looking pretty good that I will. This is a pretty decent setup and I'm having a good time. I got a lot of damage. So it should happen. But uh, it's definitely not nowhere near as strong as I was doing on the PC, for sure. Now, I've got this other pill. Now, you might have noticed that most of the pills that I got are mostly good effects. They can actually give you bad effects as well, too. So you got to kind of decide whether you actually want to take pills or if you don't. 
in this case, yeah, there you go. Prime example. Health down. So I just lost a whole heart because of that. Which is really, really unfortunate. But, uh, you know what? Sometimes you just gotta give it a shot. You can't really get the really awesome pills by not getting any pills at all. So I just picked those up, get out of that troll bomb. I don't want to take any more damage. Clearly that room was not the way to go here. I'm gonna try this way. Now, that particular room we were just in was basically a 2x2 two two room, twice the size of these regular ones. That's also new to Rebirth. In the original game, they only had regular rooms this size for everything. And I'm actually going to go back here, and I forgot I can fly, so I'll just take this over here. I don't know how I managed to forget that I can fly. It's kind of obvious. Ah, uh, hello, Larry Jr. Enjoy some bombs. <laughs> oh, I've never seen this before. Um... Okay, maybe I have to uh, bomb it? Oh yeah, okay, so oh, you have to bomb that chest to get it open. Sweet. I had never seen that before, that's really awesome. One, uh, one of the new things added into Rebirth, guys. Yes. And when the map does that and the timer counter comes on, that's me accidentally touching the trackpad in the middle of the PS4 controller. One of the things I hate about the designs of the P uh, PS4 controllers, but I'm definitely not going to go into that in this. I'll just... Leave it at that. So let's go in here. Ooh, what's this? Big fan, fat protector. Oh, cool. So, like I may have touched on with that little fly that I got before the pretty fly, that's an orbital. They go around, they'll block shots and do different things for you. This one's a big version, I guess, and he goes around really slowly. Because I have the money here, I'm gonna pick up this, the spirit heart, and I'm gonna pick up this item. I've actually seen this item in one of the people I've been watching play it. Uh, it's a really cool device. I'll demonstrate it here in just a second. Let me fly over and find a room. It, uh, ooh, I almost ran into that. It probably wouldn't be the worst thing to play the blood, blood bank. Yes, okay, that's what they're called, blood banks. I think I called them something completely different earlier on. Oh, let me demonstrate the item. So basically when you use the item, you put a coin in, and you didn't really see it there, but it damages everything on the screen. So you can just basically pay and win the game. Okay, so I got this hematemesis. Hematemesis? Is that what it's called? Maybe. Again, and I guess maybe we'll experiment with it and see what happens. I know for sure it drops hearts because it dropped its hearts earlier. I'm just not entirely sure how that all works. Um, as you see here in a lot of the rooms, there's been like poop and there's been fire and stuff like that. It's really recommended that you shoot all of those because they have the chance of dropping coins and stuff for you. Now this here is a bot or a, not a boss, it's a mob trap room is what it's called. Basically they're luring you in with goodies and then they attack you with all kinds of waves of monsters. And you would really only take this if you feel like you might get something worthwhile out of it. I do not normally do mob trap rooms, but it was a golden chest, which golden chests have a higher than regular chance to drop items. And actually saying that, I don't think regular chests even have a chance of dropping items. And I need to get away from that guy because I was taking way too much damage. That was ridiculous. Like, oh, I don't even know. I didn't even realize I was standing next to someone there and I took extra damage. Great. So there goes like half of my life. I should be using the charge shot a little bit more instead of tapping the stick because this does way more damage. And actually, I guess like firing rapid shots is better in this case, but it'll help push them away as you guys can see here. Oh, no. Why did I stop moving? I don't know why I stopped moving there. No, quit hitting and all I'm doing there is like I'm not even tapping it, I'm just gradually touching it and it makes that map bigger. So let's hit that and get that smaller again because I don't need that blown up like that. Come on, die. So basically what happens with these guys is every time you shoot them they drop into a pile of mud and you have to kill them before they get up. Otherwise they'll just endlessly get up. They do have lower health though after you've knocked them down the first time. So now that I have low life, I want to see what this pill does. So I did that and ooh look at that, four hearts, awesome. So, I don't know if it gives you a random amount of heart drops or what's really going on with that. Ooh, bonies. So, these are another new items. They're obviously little skeleton guys. I guess they're not really skeletons because they look like they have a regular body. But they throw bones at you and they're really freaking annoying. And these guys in the previous... These are one of the old mobs. They're called zombies. Basically, they walk around. You can only kill them from the back. So, they can be really frustrating if you're not fast enough. And they'll randomly look at you. I think you're supposed to be able to shoot them in the face and then they'll keep going in a direction and you can fly around them and hit them behind. Or walk around them normally because most of the time you're not flying. 
Oh, come on. Yes! Worked out really well. So, what floor is this again? Is this Depths 2 or Depths 1? If it's Depths 2, we're fighting the mom. No, we're not. We're, we're fighting the Fallen. The Fallen, again, is one of the original monsters. He basically does this. Excitingly does that. A lot of different features. Chases you around. Splits into two. And he also can drop you a deal with the Devil item, which is what makes him really good. And that was stupid on my part. I don't even know how I didn't take damage the first time. I want to focus down one of these guys, though, so that I don't have to worry about two of them. And I tap that map again. Get away from me. Please. No, stop it. Stop it. I got to remember that they go into that mode, which I was forgetting. That's why I took two. I think I got hit twice here. Oh, yeah, I'm down one heart and a half a heart. Come on. Die, die, die. No, please. Please stop it. Stop it. There we go. Oh, yes. So this, I think, is Lord of the Pit. Yeah, Lord of the Pit. This is one of the original items. I think it's a damage up and lets you fly as well. But I could already fly, so it's not really the greatest thing. We'll continue to do the next floor because I'm pretty sure that I'm done everything I need to on this one. Awesome. Here we go. The last floor that is available to us at this point in time. Oh, here's the Hollow. The Hollow is one of the uh, first bosses as well, too. And here he is, just being a regular monster. It's kind of—I I, kind of feel bad for them sometimes because after you know, after their usefulness has been worn out as a boss and a really challenging guy, they kind of just get put in regular rooms like the little worms and stuff like that. So it, it makes you really kind of sad for them that they don't get to really do the job that they're intended for. But uh, I suppose who really cares, right? Um, I don't think there's really anything that I can get from this room to make my time in here worthwhile. Um, this guy used to drop an item before called Skatole, which would make flies like you. But I don't know if that's really necessary with this many floors left. Yeah, I should... Yeah, no, that's all I'm going to spend here. Oh, actually, I think I have to touch him. Yeah, he's just spawning flies like a jerk to me, so... We'll just carry on here. Oh. Yeah, see, also, though, because I have... Spirit of the Night, I think it is? Yeah, Spirit of the Night. I have spectral tears which go through rocks and stuff. Normally they would not go through rocks. But it also means that, ouch, that fire and stuff like that is a little harder to kill. Not entirely sure the programming reasons for that or why you, like, for whatever reason, it seems to just skip them. Whoa. Hey now. So this is a new monster that I've never seen before. It looked like he shot purple tears, which are homing tears. So it seems like those things would have homed in on me and you know, wrecked me if I wasn't careful. I happen to get lucky. Ah, oh, no! I should have been paying attention. I know how these guys go off and how they work. They basically, ah, oh, I thought his laser beam was done. That did not end well. Oh, but I did get a heart, so that paid out really well. I gotta pay attention to what's going on. Ooh, let's drop this TNT. No, come on, TNT, blow up! See, because I have spectral... Stop tapping that. Because I have spectral tears, it just seems to, like, fly through them and not really do as much damage as it should. Oh, and I can also, like, run my hovering guys over the top of things to kill them like that. Oh, nice. Another spirit heart. I needed that, actually. These little flies are going to blow up in, I think, six directions. Yeah, six directions, as you guys can see there. So you kind of got to watch out when you kill them. Um, these little brains are leaving this trail of blood on the floor. If you weren't a flying character and you had to walk along the ground, you would take damage from that. So you got to be a little bit more careful, and you probably would focus them down in this particular situation. Oh, cool. So this is a trinket. Basically, there are various different trinkets in the game, and this one here happens to make you run faster. That sums that up. And I'm not having any luck with these shops. Not really, anyways. There's nothing in there that I really needed. I was actually really... Oh, I've never seen these guys before. That's interesting. They don't look too happy at all. Come on, guys. Just... Don't, don't take it out on me, at least. Uh, just stay chained to the wall. It's unfortunate I have to kill you. It's the only way I can get out of here. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. Ouch. Um, those red fires, they actually shoot tears at you at a slow period of rate. And that's why I took damage there, was because the tear shot at me. And this is another new enemy I haven't seen before. It looks like they jump around, fire tears, and leave blood on the ground. Oh, come on, guys. Come on. What did I ever do to you? Wow, it's already 31 minutes into this run. I didn't expect it to take that long to get through here. I kind of want to say I would do two parts on the videos, but I'm not sure if that's like the, the right way to go. I suppose I'll wait for your guys' feedback and let you decide whether you want 
want me to split up videos if they're longer than 20 minutes because 20 minutes is kind of like the benchmark I'm going to be going for my Call of Duty series. This here is almost double that. And, well, actually, here's the boss room. So the game's going to end before that, but like 35 minutes, that's nearly double what I intend for Call of Duty. So let me know if you want to break these up into two parts, maybe upload them on two different days. I feel like it'd be a little silly to do it like that, though, because all of a sudden I'll be like on the caves or something really easy for the first 20 minutes, and then all of a sudden the really hard stuff's in the second episode. That probably can't be too exciting. I'll leave it up to you guys, though. So here's our fight with Mom. The Mom fight for the very first time on most characters is really annoying, really tedious, and will wreck you. Um, a lot of people I've heard saying that this mob fight or mom fight which has been changed slightly from the original one is harder I'm not so sure it might be it might not be I know after the first time I didn't really have too many issues with it you just kind of got to watch out for the monster uh, the monsters that spawn and just watch out for the foot there's a shadow that'll pop up on the ground and that's when the foot's dropping on top of you so you just kind of watch out for that see shadow boom foot comes down dodge it and hope that you don't get enemies that are going to track you down. Um, unfortunately, like the charge shot, I'm not doing a whole lot of damage, so it's not really the greatest item in this fight. Um, on my first run on the computer with this particular seed, I had uh, really massive, massive tears. They were huge and did a lot of damage. And then they got switched out for a new item called the Ludovico Technique, which basically lets you have one giant tear that you summon up, and it does... Uh, it basically goes wherever you aim it. Ow, come on. So that alone made, I might actually lose this. And you know what? I could just start doing this. Uh, I was using my curb stomper there. That actually is working out all right. So this is paying to win right now, guys, because I feel like I was about to lose. I'm just, I've dropped 20 cents on this and I'm just <laughs> wrecking. This is not doing a lot of damage. And look at that, I've got six cents left. Wow, I, <laughs> I feel kind of like I cheaped it out there, but uh, that was interesting. That was interesting. So here, I'll let you guys enjoy this nice little cinematic that's going on. Sorry, just taking a drink there. Repeated to herself. This was the end of the line for Isaac. His mother was far too strong for him. But just as he accepted his fate, God intervened, sending an angel down from above to stop his mother's hand. And just like that, it was over. So that was one of the old cutscenes, and this is brand new. They kind of, well, they had something similar to that style in the original one. And I'm just going to skip this. Sorry, guys. I think I skipped it. Yeah. So they had something similar to that before, but it was a completely different art style. They have really nice, done-up, new images that they're using for the new end cutscenes and I'm really looking forward to seeing more of them. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you go. Let me know what you thought about the video by commenting or tweeting me at Izuna Plays. Also, be sure to check out the first episode of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. It came out yesterday and I'd love your feedback. Take care and see you guys next time.